I'm Päivi, an artist and art instructor from Finland. In this video we are creating a watercolor greeting card freely, without any references or such. I give you some loose guidelines but your card can turn out to be very different from mine. My card has flowers and plants and also many shapes that are not so clearly representational. Your card can be fully representational or fully abstract, just what you like the most. So I hope you have fun with this project and I hope it will also make you fall in love with watercolors. Let's begin with cool tones and a flat brush so that the foundation has angular shapes. I often end up painting just circles if I use a round brush all the time. The sharp strokes with a flat brush boost confidence and the blank areas between the strokes always look inspiring. But no matter how inspiring and beautiful these blank areas are, if they are located near the edges, cover them. This prevents too much busyness and keeps the focus on the center. I like to start my painting so that it gives me ideas, not so that I have a predefined idea that I aim to execute. So here I now add more colors to make the foundation more lively and then spray water to break some of the rectangular shapes. Now the card looks a mess, but once it's dry, we will look at every random spot more closely and try to see their potential. After the painting has dried, pick a small brush and focus on a small area at a time. I use negative painting to highlight the areas that I like best. Rather than painting the actual shapes, I paint the background around them. Create new tones by adding a new color to the previous mix so that the painting looks lively. Notice that my tones are muted, not bright at all. This way the background doesn't become more important than the actual elements. Now when we still have quite a lot of energy left, let's paint small and delicate patterns on one corner. This is like a wallpaper. It's always good to have something small and something big, not just similar medium-sized elements. I will paint a huge flower later and it will make these small repeats look adorable. I like romantic little flowers, but the painting feels too sugary if there are no stronger flavors. So dynamic lines and sharp shapes. After painting sharp stripes, move to curves. Try to add as much variation to the shapes as possible. It makes the card visually interesting. For me, it requires extra attention to paint elements that are not too similar in size. I often end up painting medium-sized elements only if I'm not careful. Here I outline a huge flower with a few triangles to have a big and bold thing too. So far the colors have been cool neutrals, bluish and greenish grays mostly. But let's move on to painting with warmer tones. I work quite systematically so that I start from the top part of the card and then later move to the bottom part. 
I used the negative painting technique with warmer tones too. Even if I love negative painting, I don't use it all the time. I add warmth to the best elements by colouring them with a bit bigger round brush. When working with thin and translucent paint, the good thing is that I can progress slowly and I don't have the need to erase anything. Similarly, then it's good to have a variety of sizes. It's also good to have contrasts between colors. So not only pale and medium tones, but dark too. Darken the dark areas gradually, layer by layer. When the top part has warm colours, add them to the lower part of the card too. Also darken the centre of the background. White and pastel hues look striking on the dark background and I love it. But all this drama should be in the center, not near the edges. So add light color washes around the card to tone down the edges. The painting has to be dry when you do this. In the end, add some finishing touches tiny spots and thin lines. I also improve some shapes and highlight the best areas with colour. every week and I talk about uh, creating art, show my current projects but I also give advice and inspiration. Sometimes the content is more humoristic, sometimes it's more serious uh, but in general it's about maintaining the passion for creating and if you love art I think it's worth following. I also send weekly emails and once you subscribe you will get my free mini course. I also have online classes and the 
latest class is called Magical Forest and it's about intuitive watercolour painting mixed with some fancy too. Mm -hmm.